Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that we consider for our meditation this evening is found for us in the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dear friends. When I was a teenager, I worked a few times on my friend's pig farm. And we worked on that farm doing a special job, and that was some very hot, sweaty, sticky, scratchy, heavy work. That of going in the barn, taking bales of hay off the flatbed and throwing them up into the loft. Didn't last really all that long, probably two or three hours, but it seemed like it lasted all day because of the the difficult work that it really is and the hot, heavy work that it is. But the one thing I looked to forward most of all, I believe, was at the end of that time period being able to go into my friend's air-conditioned house, sitting down and having him hand us an ice-cold Pepsi. It was time to, to rest a little bit, to to revitalize as we sat and consumed our refreshment. You can relate, no doubt, after you put in a hard day of work at home or on the job, you're ready for a nap or you're ready to sit down and have something to eat or or to drink, something that refreshes you. And when you do, you also realize that Your work isn't done. You know that there's more ahead of you. But this rest helps you physically and mentally prepare for what's to come. In the words before us, we see that kind of rest going on. Rest to recoup and to revitalize. But there's even more to this rest that's going on that doesn't maybe immediately meet the eye, and that's because of the one offering the rest in the first place. It's Jesus who's extending the invitation. Just as Jesus offered rest to weary disciples and ignorant crowds, he also offers you real rest. You have those days, perhaps, where you are just simply physically, mentally, emotionally drained. You put your heart and soul into what you're doing, and you're just plain exhausted. That seems to be the case with these 12, these 12 apostles of Jesus. You see, they had just returned from their first ministry trip, and it was Jesus who had been the one who commissioned them to go out two by two, to go out and preach and teach, to evangelize, to talk to people about the message of repentance. And if you don't think that's exhausting, just ask a pastor what it's like after having preached a sermon, after having prepared and studied and and then preached Many pastors oftentimes go home and take a nap, especially on Sundays. Well, not only were these disciples preaching and evangelizing, 
They were traveling from town to town, from, from person to person, meeting new people along the way and extending themselves. And while this had to be exciting work for them, when the adrenaline went away, no doubt they would be tired from their experience. Now couple that with something else that was going on at the time. John the Baptist had just been beheaded. Two of these twelve were originally followers of John the Baptist until John said, no, look the Lamb of God, go follow him, go follow Jesus. And so two of them knew John the Baptist very well. Chances are the other ten knew him well, or at least knew of him for sure. And no doubt did they have grief, but at the same time also a little bit of, are we next? Is Herod going to come after us and kill us too for preaching the gospel? It was with this mixed bag that they met Jesus. Grief over John the Baptist, discouragement perhaps over some of the the troubles they had along the way, and joys over some of their successes. And so they were ready to just simply unload to Jesus, to let him know what they had all been through. But that sharing moment in Capernaum didn't last very long. They were barely able to eat, let alone converse about everything that had gone on. There were so many people coming and going. It was like a zoo. And so Jesus extended that wonderful invitation to them. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Jesus knew what they needed. Here was the Son of God who had become human so that he could save us. And so now in his humanity, he experienced exactly what they did. He knew from experience what they needed. They needed some time alone, some time away from the hustle and bustle of their normal activities with all the people in and around their village. Your life, too, becomes so full of activity. And that's true even if you're retired, right? You do a lot either way. You and I understand then the value of rest, whether it's sitting down for just a few moments or whether it's going on a week-long vacation. We value that time. And yet we realize that The vacation or brief rest that we take doesn't mean the end of our activities. We know there's more ahead. This is a time to regather for what's ahead. It refreshes us so that we can go on. After all, we also recognize that remaining faithful to God is in itself hard work. We daily struggle with ourselves to do what is God-pleasing, to do what's right in, in God's eyes. We look for opportunities to serve God. And again, that simply is hard work. Thankfully, we have Jesus who invites us to take a rest. No, he's not saying take a break from being a Christian He's inviting you to rest by listening to him talk to you. Let his soothing voice calm your restless heart and reinvigorate your soul. When you don't do that, don't you feel as if something is missing? Maybe you can't always even put your finger on it, but but what's missing is that valuable close time that you can have with your Savior. You know, when we go on vacation, it might be a temptation to just say, I'm going to just take a break from God. Well, let's not make that mistake. Let's let's instead stay close to him. Let's remember him. In fact, there are opportunities we can do in order to keep in close touch with him. On our Wells website, there is a neat little feature that just simply is called Church Locator. 
wherever you're going, you can punch in that town and, and there will pop up churches nearby. In just a brief time, and not too long of a time at all, we'll be having a feature on our own website that will show our worship services. No matter where you go, God is there. Stay in touch with them. And it's really important for you to do that also on, a, on an individual basis. Each individual person needs to connect with God one-on-one. Yes, we often stress family devotions. We need those. We stress devotions between husband and wife. Those are very important. But what's also important is that one-on-one time that you need alone with God to report to him what's been going on, the good and the bad, to hear his calming voice, the assurance of his love for you. There's so many ways to do that, too. As we come to him in prayer, he can speak to us in different ways. Through meditation booklets that are written, through meditations that are on the the computer or on a tablet or even a phone, to read God's word or even to listen to God's word, all neat ways to be able to to rest in the voice of our Savior. After all, your Savior wants to talk to you. He goes out of his way to do that. In fact, he showed that with the clueless crowds of people that followed him. After those disciples came back and Jesus embarked on that little little trip up the coast of the Sea of Galilee, just a few miles away, those crowds follow Jesus along. They follow along the, 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 the line, along the coast, and met Jesus and his disciples. Those disciples saw them coming as well, certainly, as did Jesus. They were uninvited guests. Jesus had only told his disciples to come along. You could even say that those crowds that followed along the, the, the shore were, were pretty rude. So what did Jesus do? Just simply ignore them? Tell them to go away? Well, not a chance because Jesus knew something about these people. He saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd. Think about that picture, like we see in Psalm 23, the the vitalness of having a shepherd, right? To lead or to guide. Left to themselves, those, those sheep would either starve or run off a cliff or be eaten by wild animals eventually. This crowd, too, didn't have any direction And if it remained that way, they would be in great trouble as well. And so Jesus had compassion on them. His heart went out to them. He went to work on the crowd because he knew exactly what they needed, even though they really didn't know what they needed themselves. You can be sure that he taught them about the rest from their sins that He had come to provide them. And that's the same rest that you have too. This rest comes because of what Jesus has done for you. He lived for you. That means that the Lord is our righteousness, as Jeremiah the prophet proclaimed in our first lesson. And Paul reminds us in the Ephesians lesson that you who once were far away, have been brought near through the blood of Christ. His death brought us rest from our sins so that we could live in the presence of God. We all need rest. Rest from our labor. Rest to recharge so that we can get back at it. Spend time taking Jesus up on his 
invitation to get that rest. And remember that not only does he provide you rest for your souls here, but he promises you that an eternal and a perfect rest awaits you. And that is a rest worth waiting for. Amen.